How do we normally categorize things? Well, let's look at some examples here. You probably look at that drawing there and think dog. You probably didn't think physical object, sentient being, animal, mammal. You might have thought golden retriever, but you probably hadn't thought of rover. All of those are possible levels at which you could have categorized this drawing, but you don't pick some of them. I'm gonna guess that you have never seen a sign in your neighborhood that says lost mammal or lost sentient being or lost animal. Some levels of categorization are more useful than others depending on what you wanna do. So if we take the bottom right-hand corner, again, this fellow could be categorized as a physical object, a sentient being, an animal, a mammal, a human, a student, a CSUN student, or Seth Smith. If Seth is in my class, I need to know him as Seth Smith. But under other circumstances, knowing that he's a CSUN student might be enough, or knowing that he's a human being might be enough. Depends on what I want to do. But generally speaking, our preferred category is what's called the basic level category. So for example, if I go into a restaurant and with some friends and there were missing a chair at a table, I don't ask for a piece of furniture and I don't ask for a Windsor chair, I ask for a chair. Right? Um, chair is a preferred level of categorization. Now, if I wanted to be more general, I could use the superordinate level, which would be all of furniture, right? Chair is a subset of all of furniture. Or if I was really, really picky about the kind of chair I wanted, I could ask for a rocking chair or a Windsor chair or, I don't know, something else, a beanbag chair. So we use the basic level most. And it, because it's a nice trade-off between accuracy and predictability, right? So if I say, if I put a, a, a lost animal sign out in my neighborhood, it's true, I would get calls from people who lost dogs and cats and snakes and probably a few husbands in my neighborhood. Um, <laughs> So it would always be right, these things are all animals, but they're not the animal I'm looking for, right? I'm looking for my lost cat. Now I could also put up a sign that says, I'm looking for Reese, who is indeed my cat, but putting up a sign that says Reese, nobody's gonna know what that means. They might think I'm looking for my mother-in-law or something, right? So um, uh, subordinate categories can be too specific. Right, superordinate is often too general, subordinate is often too specific, but not always, depends what you want to do. I'm going to show you now a number of data points that support the idea that the basic level category is our preferred category. And the first one is that basic level categories is a level at which shapes or outlines tend to have some similarity. So furniture tends to have similar shapes, animals sort of tend to have similar shapes, by that I mean so furniture has right angles and animals don't, that sort of thing. When babies learn to talk, the first words that they develop are basic level categories, right? Your child will learn dog or doggy, kitty, before they learn uh, Doberman Pinscher or German Shepherd or animal, right? No baby has ever looked at a dog and said animal. We use, babies use basic level categories. Um, and in fact, when you are first learning a language, maybe a second language or a third language as an adult, the words that you use first are the basic level categories. So we use them a lot in language, they're very important. And we can also categorize things by the basic level faster than by the more general or more specific levels, right? So if I ask you, if I show you pictures of objects and ask you to categorize those objects, you can categorize them most quickly by dog, cat, zebra, uh, car. Then if I ask you to say um, a kind of cat or a kind of car, or even if I ask you to do the more general thing and say animal versus vehicle versus furniture, that's the evidence that basic level rules come right back. And we'll talk about classic theories of categorization.